Round penning is a phenomenal tool. I happened to learn it from one of the masters in California and spent many, many hours by the round pen watching students, maybe 10, 16 students a day for close to six years in one form of round penning or another. So when I see it done, there's many things that people do incorrect nowadays. Unfortunately, it's one of those tools that, if used effectively, can be wonderful to create a better relationship and foundation from the ground up. If used incorrectly, it can be a place of abuse. So my hope is to be able to educate people on the round pen and show you how to create a two-way communication system, how to create the foundation from the ground up, and when and when not to utilize it. So that's what we'll be concentrating on today. I'm opening it with a lecture so that you have some understanding as to what you're doing in the round pen. And then later on today, we go through the individual horses. You'll see the personalities and characters go through and you'll get a chance to see different people with different accents and the accent meaning their body language. So let's begin to find out when it's a good time to use a round pen and see what you guys come up with. So what do you think? When's it good? To... Okay, starting a colt, I agree. I think it's the safest place to start a young colt is in the round pen and mainly because they have exit routes and it's round so that they don't get stuck in a corner. You can use a picadaro or a stool. In England, Europe, they use stools an awful lot of the times, but a round pen is a safe place. They feel like they can move and they can explore the new equipment at a walk, trot, and a canter. So it's a great place to start a young horse. What else would you utilize it for? First ride. Yeah, might put the, I'd probably put the first three to five rides on in the round pen so that you have the direction on them. You can teach them left, right, slow, stop, forward, and once you get some form of commu communication, you can take them out of the round pen. So it's not until you feel like you have that that you would indeed take them out and go into an arena because you're safer in a round pen than in an arena. They can pick up speed in here. So that's the other reason. So what else would you look for other than starting a young horse? Just to observe him. Okay. Maybe, yeah. And how they move. Yeah, so if you're looking to buy a horse, for example, it's a great thing to go in the round pen and start the communication because you can see how they move, you can see the confirmation, how they respond, react, how sensitive they are, their gait control, the rhythm, if they're lame or not, their mindset. You can read all of that to buy a horse or indeed just observe them if you're going to ride them. And Kim was saying that yesterday, wasn't she? If I was going to ride, I'd want to know a bit more about them. Well, the round pen is perfect. What else is it good for? Katya. <laughs> what else is it good for? Okay. And what would you do in there if you had a problem? Okay, I agree with you though. If you have a problem, the round pen's great. I used it one time. Um, my stallion doesn't like to be bridled. It's really fussy about it, particularly his right ear. So what I did, and it worked really well, was worked him and then brought him in and tried to put the bridle on. He fussed about it to put him back to work. First time it took about an hour to get the bridle on, and then it went right down to 33 minutes got to where I could bridle the horse within three minutes, which was a huge difference from the hour. Right, and, right. Uh, I didn't continue with that. I, we got better at it. We probably need to go over that process again because he's been off of work for a while. But it was highly successful using it to just go back to work and come back in. This is a good place to be and have your bridle on. Right yeah, and it's a nice size. I work in a 50-foot round pen, and 50 feet will allow you to work with the ponies, the thoroughbreds, and the warm blood. 60 is kind of better for a warm blood, but 50 works. And it means that you're not exerting yourself unnecessarily. In an arena type situation, in here, for example, with that stud, you're getting a workout. <laughs> you're getting a workout. So the round pen is easier on the humans. You can do the round penning and the communication anywhere. You can choose a huge 40,000 acre pasture if you want, but you're working harder at it. So the round pen's good. Now, you can utilize it to use certain principles of work versus rest, like this one was, 
But certainly for me, it's a nice place to begin the foundation of telling them and that I can speak the language. That's the whole idea. I'm entering that round pen saying I can speak a language. I'm bridging the gap between the two worlds and communicating with you in a way that you understand. That's the whole idea of it. So if I've got a remedial horse, my first thing is to say, I can speak your language. Listen, watch. I will prove to you that I'm never going to hurt you. I'm going to build trust. And this trust that we do in the next 15 minutes will be trust that will be consistent throughout our relationship. And that's what you're able to be doing in there. So you can put the kickers, the biters, the rearers, the buckers, you name it, can go in a round pen environment. And it's not the pill. You're certainly not going to solve the issue by moving their feet and sending them certain directions, but you're setting up a foundation which they can understand. Okay? So I think that encompasses many aspects of it. If somebody's got a great relationship with their horse, like Julie, you can enhance the relationship. Um, if your relationship's already perfect, you don't need the round pen. The sooner you get the young horses out of the round pen, the better because they're going to get bored. And unfortunately, they're often kept in there too long and then they create remedial issues and you've got to solve the problems and people turn around and say, you know, here we have a difficult horse when in fact the horse should have come out the round pen way before. So when I use a round pen with a particular horse and the, pick, the contract that you're going to be learning today, the, the set contract that I'm going to be teaching you will be done no more than one to five times in their life not a week or a month, in their lifetime. And so that's important to realize that you're going through a set communication. And if you harp on about that too long, they will get bored with it. And they get frustrated and upset because you're keeping them in kindergarten. You're saying, you know, I want to practice this day in, day out. Why should they? Their language supersedes or far exceeds this portion. And then it has to become an everyday activity. So what we did yesterday with the obstacle course and then today with the round penning, that will show you the basics of the language. Then it's up to you to utilize it whenever you're with them. Okay? So without watching a portion of the DVD, which would help you a little bit to see what it looks like, I'm going to go through and explain how this particular thing works. I'm going to give you an overview first or off and then we're going to break it down.